We were supposed to keep track of our spending in the same journals in which we wrote about our experiences. I wrote expenses scattered around the pages as they arose, in a disorganized way, including, on the first day, 300 yen to make a wish at a temple at the top of Mount J, so that toward the end of the trip, when it would have been useful to count up what I'd spent, it was difficult to find the numbers hidden around the pages. At the temples, Japanese girls came up to us, giggled, asked to take photos with us. When they laughed, they covered their mouths. They held out bunny ears behind one another's backs before the click. I paid to write wishes on slips of paper, pushed them through an opening in a granite stone to be burned later by praying monks. We traveled to Ikeda, where we stayed for a week, and one evening we went to a bathhouse. We brought towels into the baths for modesty. But I found I wasn't uncomfortable. It seemed like nothing to be naked here. The room was large, with three different baths, a sauna in the back, a warm, hot smell of sandalwood and steam. There was a hot pool, a cold pool, a dark sauna that made a ringing sound from an electric grate. There were young women and thin old women, with skin dripping down, bones showing through. Women with towels around their chests leaned back in the hot pool with closed eyes. A few hours later, when we left through the metal turnstile into the night, the heat of the pools clung to me, insulating me against the night air. We all gave off steam. Toward the end of the trip, we arrived in Hiroshima. Inside the dark hallway of the museum were lit cases containing fingernails, hair in boxes, burned pieces of kimonos, black and white photographs of children abandoned and crying. Some children had been vaporized immediately. Others survived, but then lost their hair in large tufts, lost their fingernails, even their fingers in the following weeks. The bomb created tornado-like effects. Radiation was carried by the wind in irregular patterns. For school, I'd read a book about a mother and daughter on a bridge. When the bomb hit, the daughter had become a soot smear on the ground, while the mother was left naked, her skin charred with the shapes of the dark flowers on her kimono. The image haunted me. That afternoon, a few of us went to look at the epicenter of the bomb, a fenced-off area with an old building that remained standing. There were cement benches surrounded by planters looking into this fenced-off area and sycamore trees with mottled trunks dropping leaves that curled like hands on the asphalt around the benches. I bought a tray of unagi on rice from a mini-mart nearby and sat on one of the benches. Inside was a plot of land covered in scrub grasses. The land around the building was more expansive than other plots of land I'd seen in Japan, except at the temples. It reminded me of the empty lots between buildings around Palo Alto off El Camino Real, weeds sticking up in the dirt. In the middle was an old see-through structure, a curved dome made of only panels of steel, like scaffolding or a dressmaker's form. This was a building standing on the morning the bomb was dropped that had been reduced to its skeletal structure below paint and plaster, like a dry leaf worn away to a system of brown veins. It remained because, given the physics of the bomb, the place at the epicenter of where the nuclear bomb was dropped was not destroyed. We left Hiroshima and went to a town in the countryside where we stayed in a low, flat building with a meeting room in the middle. We'd already been to many temples in the mountains, green and smelling of peat and rain. We'd been on the bullet train, so smooth it hardly felt like we were moving, I'd been thinking about my mother and our fights. It was a relief to be away from her. I knew that when I returned, the fights would continue. On the second day in the countryside, near the end of our trip, a man walked through the door and into the meeting room. It took me a moment to realize who it was. My father, barefoot, flipping the hair out of his face. Steve? I said. Hey, Lise, he said, smiling. The whole class looked. I was nearby on a business trip. I thought I'd come find you. But how did you know I was here? We were far from Tokyo and Kyoto, where we went on business trips. I have my ways, he said.
I looked at Lee, who winked. 